Back to the Love and Dubai show today, we are joined by Namrita Sharma, a cricket anchor. She's also a fitness lover, a model, and an incredible presenter with a dynamic range of skills. She's making waves and turning heads. Welcome to the show, Namrita. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, guys. It's such a pleasure to be here. And yeah, I'm so excited and pumped up for today. So right. you're basically like, uh, you know, jack of all trades. So tell us about yourself. Who is Namrita Sharma? Well, Namrata Sharma is just your girl next door who's trying to, you know, make an identity for herself, make it big in the industry. And just someone who wants to, like, you know, really, really inspire all the young boys and girls out there Mm -hmm. who want to, like, you know, do something abnormal from the society and the conventions. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I I have, like, quite a story if I can elaborate. And... uh, That will tell you why exactly and how exactly I'm here today. Well, this is the thing. We're here for the story. We're here for how you got into cricket specifically. Um, right. But let's go. You have the floor. Mm-hmm. So I must say how I was, you know, like one of the most introvert and shy and underconfident, ugly, fat looking kid in my school. And I would always feel like, you know, I never fit in and I don't have many friends and I don't know, like, you know, what am I going to do and this and that. But I always knew that I want to have like unique choices. I want to do something different. I want to like, you know, do something unconventional in life. I knew I had this really deep creativity part in me, which I wanted to definitely explore as a career and, you know, be uh, doing that for all my life. And that's what happened. Like whenever, you know, kids choose left, I choose right. Kids choose black, I would choose white. So that's how it was always Uh, has been and that's what uh, made me realize that you know there's something definitely not wrong about me but Mm -hmm. it's just that I want to do something different and unique and that's what my choices already made me do so I then finally decided that I want to like you know because of the creativity side take up interior designing as a profession and I started uh, my BSc like my bachelor's in science degree in interior design while I started getting modeling offers. Now, it was the first ever ramp show that I was offered by my college principal itself. And I was like, you know, ma'am, like, why are you doing this with me? I don't think it's a good idea because my normal walk is also like a man sometimes. I'm so Mm -hmm. underconfident. I don't like the limelight. I don't like the stage. I can't do it. And she was like, no, you know what? I think I believe in you and you can do it. Give it, give it a thought and just give it a shot. So I was like, okay, let's, let's maybe, you know, like what, what's, what's the worst that can happen? I might like trip on the ramp and uh, make a fool out of myself, but at least I won't regret the decision of not ever doing it in my life. I did it. I loved it so much that I wanted to just, you know, explore it much more and see what's out there for me and see, you know, how much can I really like make this happen for me. And then there was like this one night I still remember in my bed, I could not sleep. I just woke up all night and I was exploring about models all over the world and what do they do? How do they talk? How do they walk? What do they eat? Things like that. And then just literally next morning I hit the gym. I signed up for a professional course for modeling and went on for like Miss India and stuff like that. And I started getting modeling offers and acting jobs. And there was no looking back since then. And probably... Four or five years later, when I had done a lot of modeling assignments from ramp to prints to campings, everything that's out there Mm -hmm. back in India and Bombay. And I started realizing how all the uncle and aunties you meet on the daily basis, they all ask you just one question. That beta TV pe kabar. <laughs> oh, so you know that so was my like, breaking. When are you gonna come on TV? And yeah, that was my breaking point. <laughs> I, I was like, something you know, totally different. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, if you want to make an identity in this career, nobody really understands what modeling is, what fashion industry is really like. Yeah, it always just made me come back to that point that if I want to make an identity for myself in this career, I have to become an actor or do something really uh, good that's going to give me exposure on TV. Mm-hmm. right and that's what made me uh, that that's what made me think that i need to you know like take up acting and switch and transition totally from modeling to acting and while i was doing that i explored many different sort of options of what exactly is i am that i'm going to be interested in whether movies or serials etc i was just exploring while 
I ended up having my own production house as well in, in the meantime and everything. And I made my own music video, produced my own music video, featured in it as well. So there was a lot going on, okay? There, there was like a lot of modeling offers and acting jobs still coming in my way. But at the same time, I started getting these cricket offers here in the UAE. And I was like, you know, why am I sitting in Bombay and waiting for something that's not really certain or guaranteed because I come from a very humble background. I didn't really have any friends or family to, you know, like really, really guide me how to become an actor or go about it, meet the kind of people you need to meet and what is it exactly that you need to do. Because as you know, it's not that easy for a person who's not coming from that sort of a background. So, you know, why do I wait and uh, waste my time for something that is not really guaranteed? And in front of that, if I'm getting like these really good cricket offers. Why were you getting good cricket offers? That was again because of how my life has been so adventurous that everything I've done in my life has ever or has always like never been a part of the plan. It's always come to me in the flow of it. And I would always like meet people through work and they would like me and you know recommend me to to other people introduce me to other people oh, so basically who, like word of mouth and literally so but I, you never showed any uh what do you say knack for cricket or did you ever show interest in sports well, and well, fans? <laughs> yeah i mean you know as an indian you definitely love cricket i mean mm. you you grow up watching cricket but i was never really like you know a cricket player or as such like i, I never really thought that you know i want to like become a cricket presenter one day or anything mm-hmm. like that but because I was good at anchoring already, because I was good at public speaking and public appearances, I was confident on camera, I was confident that, yeah, if I go live, I know what what am I supposed to do. So only things like that um, approached towards me uh, to, you know, give me these offers. And they took auditions and they were like, okay, you know what, let's let's just go for it. There's some tournament that's uh, happening in the next 10 days if you're still in Dubai. And I was coming to Dubai like all the time for my work and friends and family. And just one thing after the other kept falling in place for me in Dubai. Mm-hmm. And that's the best part about this city, you know, like it's been only what, like over three months now that I moved to Dubai completely. And within just these three months, all these exciting things are happening for me, right? So it's just been really, really nice and grateful. Um, Yeah, so one of these tournaments that happened fetched me another one and then another one from that. Mm. And some big names, if I could uh, This is what we wanted to talk about, big names. Do you have it in the UAE? Exactly. And drop the big (laughs) names. Who have you met? Who have you spoken to? And any kind of amazing memory memory from those interviews? Of course, of course. So I did Abu Dhabi T10, which uh, has six seasons of the tournament already. And that happens in uh, Abu Dhabi. It used to happen in Sharjah and Dubai earlier as well. Mm -hmm. And now, if you know, there's this other tournament happening called ILT20, which is like as good as IPL and people are like going crazy about it and everything. And I'm hosting uh, the team of Adani, uh, Adani group, if you might know from Mm -hmm. India, called Gulf Giants. So that is also happening on the side with that. And... Yeah, I mean, I've met like best of the cricketers from all around the world. You could name people like Dwayne Bravo to Polar to uh, to Sheldon Cottrell to a lot of Indian cricketers like Harbhajan Singh, Yuvraj Singh and uh, who who else? I mean, Suresh Rana. I mean, I can just go on and on, right? Mm-hmm. And all of them have become like, you know, buddies and like close friends and everything. And it's crazy because I never thought that I would see myself amongst these people. And they're all like amazing people, you know, like they they come from humble backgrounds and they've also like, you know, worked hard and uh, being being a sports person, you know how it is. Like there's so much that it takes and so much that goes behind it. And still they are like so grounded and so humble and so sweet and so entertaining and everything at the same time. What about like the local scene now, local cricketers and who are some of the faces to definitely watch out for and what's happening there? So... The whole UAE team, they're really, really, you know, making big waves in the cricket industry for sure. They're doing the best of the leagues that the world can cover. This ILT20 that I'm talking about is also definitely giving a lot of good exposure to UAE players, which is a really good thing for them. Um, because back back then when there were not many T20 leagues, 
a lot of cricketers were not getting many opportunities, right? But now, because of the new scenes, all these cricketers are getting like really good exposure and really good opportunities. So definitely from the whole UAE team, I could name people like Chirag Suri and Alishan Shafaru and uh, uh, Sanchit Sharma. And there are so many, like most of them are really amazing players. And I'm sure like, you know, in the years to come, you'll see them doing the best of the cricket jobs. And at the same time, not just the men team, but at the same time, you know, the under 19 team, and then the under 19 women's team and the main women's team, they're also doing really amazing, I must say. I mean, I've worked with uh, Chaya Mughal, who's the UAE women's team captain, and she has been an inspiration completely because I must say that, you know, she has an incredible story to share. And uh, definitely the whole women's scene also over here is mm. picking up. The under 19 team just very recently went for World Cup, played against the best of the teams all around the world. They created an identity for themselves at that platform. So definitely it's picking up for them and, you know, they're doing like really amazing things. That's so interesting because before we would hear about the Olympics, I mean, not, not before, as in right now the UAE yeah. and uh, like a lot of sports is we're excelling at the Olympics and different, different uh, fields. So would you say the cricket scene is also picking up quite a lot? Definitely, because... Um, UAE is that region all over the world which is like quite the epicenter right yeah. and a lot of Indian viewership and so many players from all around the world are coming here and doing all these leagues the best of the international names you could say and at the same time Indian players UAE players so definitely there's a lot of cricket happening over here and that's what also made me um, you know decide that I should move from Mumbai to Dubai if I want to make a career in cricket because this is the place to be right now for cricket for sure. There are all these amazing leagues, T20 leagues happening over here mm -hmm. that's going to give me as well as the cricketers a lot of good exposure. It's good for the city. It's good for UAE as well. So, you know, it's definitely the place to be. Well, this is it. You yeah. said it's good for you. It's good for the cricketers. And there's one right. thing that I see from an outsider looking in is the fans' perspective. And UAE yes. fa cricket fans are so lucky because there's so much going on. Exactly. Can you speak of like the fan energy and like the different uh, the different teams that you watch? Like, describe the fan energy when you're at matches. My God, the fan energy is crazy. Like, you know, those are the people who actually keep you pumped up throughout your long, exhausting days. Mm. And I must say, like, when you are at the stadium, <laughs> seriously, like, you guys should come. Fan you know energy coming from her. <laughs> no, you guys should come for one of the matches and see how crazy it is in the stadium. Because we have these long, exhausting days, a lot of pressure to go live and, you know, like, keep a watch on the game of what's happening, keep learning and making notes of what's happening. But the fans and the uh, audience in the background are, like, always rooting and cheering and howling. And they're, like, Love so it. pumped up all the time. And it's crazy to see how all these really big stadiums, like the Abu Dhabi Stadium or the Dubai International Stadium, they're full of people. Mm. You know, like, the capacity is so much and it's not easy to fill that. True. But they're, they're like filled up and it's full of people. And it's crazy for me to see that because I didn't know that, you know, it can be like this. Because on TV, you don't really understand what, what the vibe is like. But when you're like in there and out there, yeah. it's a whole different feeling. Mm. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so uh, for you, when you get into the field, how does it work? Like you just, you, you just basically anchor or you do it from the beginning to the end? Or how does it work? So generally for all these tournaments, what happens is there are flash interviews in between uh, the overs or between two innings of the match. And then there are dugout interviews wherein you know you go to the dugout of where the players are sitting you go and interview them all of, all of this is live broadcast yeah. and apart from that then we do a lot of digital content like uh, social media behind the scenes content which is more fun and more quirky more spontaneous which you know even brings out all the fun factor from these cricketers because you see them all serious and like in in that zone when they are on field but then it's more fun to see them doing all these really cool and funny things uh, off the field Field. Uh, we make them, you know, like do dance moves, or we make them How play do you like break other the sports. Ice with them because <laughs> sportsmen are usually so serious. Exactly. Right? Like, how do you? But I ice? must say, they're also the most. Uh, fun-loving guys for sure <laughs> yeah I mean although they are like you know so disciplined and so focused and everything 
the men after all right i mean and they're like young boys they want to have fun they want to like play and they want to like enjoy right mm-hmm. although we see them on tv doing what they do but they have like this really different side which we would never even imagine and mm-hmm. it's just so crazy to you know experience that and i i just feel like 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 really super pumped up and uh happy when i'm you know doing all these things with them you know what you literally have the dream job of any cricket fan you yeah. are on the pitch <laughs> yeah, for sure, like for sure. having the best time with cricketers like Definitely. dream job um that you're in right now so looking ahead uh where do you see yourself are you going to stay in cricket will you stay in the uae or what's what's the dream yeah so definitely for now i will be in the uae do these cricket leagues and like i said it's been only what about 3 4 months if, since i moved here and in the one uh, last one year only is when i started doing cricket presenting and cricket anchoring and since then i've done already you know you could say like the best of the leagues that the uae has to offer so i'm looking forward to you know do the best of the leagues in the world because of the experience that i'm gaining over here maybe ipl next because uh, as we all know women's ipl is also happening very soon and then there's men's ipl which is obviously like the world's greatest one so yeah, yeah definitely like i mean right now that's what my focus would be on and ue in general has so much to offer right like even if cricket doesn't happen unfortunately in the future there's just i feel there's so much to the, to do to for uh, the country to offer to me because even before i plan to move here for no reason i mean it, it was just so easy for me to find jobs because there are not as many uh, you know indian talents i must say or desi talents mm-hmm. for that matter for what they're looking for mm-hmm. and in bombay that's completely a different case and it's completely a different situation right because every a lot other of person yeah, yeah literally like every other person in bombay wants to make it big in the bollywood or or uh, modeling industry so of course it's like you know very different from that scenario and set up to here and for sure it's uh, yeah it's just uh, a lot of opportunities even if not cricket but like i was saying that my life has been completely adventurous every time and uh, nothing has gone as per plan or i've never as such planned for anything and that has always worked for me So I'm hoping that <laughs> is how Trinity. it's always oh. going to be. Yes. Getting out of your comfort yeah. zone all of that. So let's put you out of your comfort zone now. Okay. With a quick game round. So okay. <laughs> you're quite uh you know like in with the cricketers and you have so much cricket knowledge. So let's put that to test. My god. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Please As guys, whoever all the tournament organizers are watching me don't judge me based on this. <laughs> oh. It is called the Cricket Lingo Challenge with Namrita Sharma. Hmm. We're going to play and we're going to name out some cricket lingo mm-hmm. and we're going to see if you can tell us what it is. Let's go okay, for it. Okay, Namrita Sharma, let's have what is a duck? What is a duck? What is a duck? <laughs> like a downhill duck? <laughs> no, a duck. Um I'm guessing that it's one of the moves that you do uh-huh. while playing cricket <laughs> oh my god i mean she's not wrong there right she's not wrong yeah i'm i'm sure that's not i a, think no no it's completely wrong actually <laughs> so, the the answer is a score of 0 made by a batsman so typically as a result is being bowled so it's a score of 0 mm. okay. okay we've got we've got more to go uh All right. next one i'm already under a, pressure <laughs> <laughs> what is a yorker Oh yorker that's like one of the most basic things that uh, a cricketer can you know hit mm-hmm. it's uh, uh, like one of these most simplest or at the same time uh, a shot that can even get you a 4 or a 6 it's in between somewhere in between the wicket and yeah i, I mean yes. yeah uh, I, i don't know how else to <laughs> yeah, explain this in what other roads do i explain <laughs> this that right what well, we have which is what you said it's a type of delivery uh, so where it's aimed uh, delivered low aiming at the batsman's feet so like a safe one yeah a safe yeah for my audience in yeah. in common language in layman's language i'm trying to explain it to them <laughs> but that's so good you got that one so, so, so one from uh, one from two okay yeah so next one century 
of course centuries when a cricketer makes a hundred on field that's that we have no you. cricket knowledge <laughs> not easy for, i knew a century yeah. oh i didn't even know oh, that I, have, i heard the word but i wouldn't have known how to describe it mm. it's it's just easy you know century means what a hundred so yeah that's that's what it is so basically it is a score of hundred or more runs yeah. made by a batsman in a single innings That's cool. That's, That's right. cool. I had no idea. That's until. right. <laughs> so Namrita has two from three. And the final one Yay. in our challenge, cricket lingo. What is a goggly? No, a googly. A googly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was like, is this something that I must know, but I've never heard What's of. What's a goggly? What's a googly? googly. So it's a type of uh, a ball that the bowler has bowled. And uh-huh. you could say that the cricketer, the batsman, has not been able to hit it because of the way he's delivered because of the way the bowler has delivered and it definitely like doesn't go uh, straight to the batsman so that he can hit like a good four or six or even like a two but it's like literally off the the mark or off the yes, target she knows her cricket <laughs> number she knows her cricket they go okay, three from four not too bad <laughs> keep the job we'll keep ours <laughs> Batting it out the park. Batting it out the park. Those answers. Will we give you a six? Is that the highest you can? (laughs) Uh, That is great. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, guys. And where can people follow you? Um, no, on out. my Instagram account for sure. That's Namrata Sharma with a double underscore in the end. Yes, please follow me on Instagram and let me keep you guys entertained and updated with cricket and a lot of other things that I enjoy doing in life. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. That is it for us on the Love in Dubai show. Goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Bye-bye.